Hey there, in this video I'll be talking about whether or not the R7 is a good B camera to the C70. And for a lot of videographers out there who own a C70 and myself included, this is a question that I had, but you know, I think it seems like an obvious choice. They're both made by Canon, they're both crop sensors. The R7 is pretty inexpensive compared to a C70, so it might be a great option. And we'll get into a bunch of tests and all that kind of stuff. But before we do that, let's talk for a moment about what you need to, to be a good B camera. First of all, I usually recommend trying to get the same camera if you can, uh, but there's some situations where you need other features or maybe cost or size is a limiting factor. So at least get the same brand of camera because when you do that, the colors will often match and you'll have similar, similar log profiles and all that kind of stuff. You also wanna think about image quality and dynamic range and sensor size. Although sensor size isn't as important, but you need to keep that in mind when you're thinking about your lens options for getting the right framing that you need. And the, you know, one of the biggest reasons to have a B cam, in my opinion, is for two camera interview setup. So you're looking at this here, where you're trying to get another camera that's, you know, off to the side at a different focal length, and you can cut between them. So when the talent makes a mistake, you can switch between the two camera angles. And how is this for YouTube? <laughs> I know this is not really a traditional uh, setup for YouTube, and most people are just talking right to the camera. But anyways, I wanted to show you this here, and this is already a good way for me to show you how these two images match up, and we'll head outside and do some other comparisons comparisons to see how that works. But also keep in mind, you know, how you're gonna be using your B camera, as I said here, for a two camera interview, but you also might have an A camera that's all rigged up and you need the B camera to be smaller and more nimble, maybe putting it on a gimbal, or maybe taking it handheld, maybe taking some uh, photos. So there's a lot of reasons that you gotta consider when you're thinking about a B camera. So first of all, the biggest question is, do these cameras match? So let's do some tests. Well, now I'm outside and <laughs> probably the worst time of day, the sun is directly overhead and it's very hot out here. But what I wanna do out here is just take a look at the image and one thing that's always of concern is matching the different profiles. So the R7 can only shoot in C-Log3, the C70 can shoot in C-Log3, but also can shoot in C-Log2, which is a better profile than C-Log3, you get more dynamic range. So what I was shooting with inside was C-Log2 and the C70, and right now I'm shooting on C-Log2, so you can see how the colors match. But let's also test C-Log3 in the C70. Now I have the C70 shooting with C-Log3 to match the R7, and this is a comparison between the two and how I can match the colors and image as close as possible. Of course, I recommend shooting in C-Log2 as much as possible because it has more dynamic range than C-Log3. So if you're doing most of your shots with the C70 as your A-cam, I'd probably leave it on C-Log2, but I wanted to give you this comparison using C-Log3 on both cameras. All right, so after comparing the two cameras inside and outside, I think the R7 is a great B cam. And there was a couple of things there where they're not ex the cameras weren't exactly the same, but I, I do wanna talk about that. Now, are the colors close? Yes. Can you get them to match perfectly? Probably with a little bit more work than I did with those examples there. And the talking head bit that I did outside, I think that I got them really close. Some of the B-roll, I think it was a little bit different and I was switching up between C-Log2 and C-Log3, but if you're cutting between the footage, I don't think you'd notice a difference. You never are like staring at both next to each other. Now, one point where I was shooting that, that the wider shot there with the trees, you could definitely tell the difference there between dynamic range on C-Log2 and C-Log3, and I had a lot more trouble matching those clips because of the limitations of the dynamic range in C-Log3, but overall, I would say the image quality and colors look great between the two cameras, and I definitely think that you can get them to match up pretty easily. Now that we looked at the colors and image quality between the two cameras, I wanna give you a bunch of reasons why the R7 is a good B cam to the C70, and then I'll talk about some limitations. So they both have RF mounts, which is great because you can use RF lenses, and you can also use EF lenses with the basic adapter. You can also put a speed booster on both of these cameras, and I made a video about putting the Viltrox speed booster on the R7. I'll leave that video linked down below. They, the R7 doesn't have any record limits, so if you have a long run time for an interview, you don't have to worry about that like you would on like the R5 or the R6. Overheating is pretty well controlled on this camera. It's not gonna run indefinitely without heating, but it does very well. I made a video testing that again, which I'll leave linked down below. And the battery life is excellent on this camera. It runs a significant amount of time. That's one big benefit about the C70 is that it's really good on battery and, and will run a long time. They both run on the same media, so SD cards, so that's great. You can share the same media, that makes it really handy. 
The autofocus is great on the R7, which is really important, especially if you're one man banding and you know operating two cameras. Your B camera, the autofocus should be really reliable and it is with this camera, so that's, that's a benefit too. Now, in terms of the log profiles and the color gamuts, like I was saying before, trying to match them, this only does C-Log3, whereas the C70 does C-Log3 and C-Log2, but they both can be shot in cinema gamut to try to get the colors as close as possible, but we already kind of went over that, but at least it does have C-Log3, which is really handy because it does have quite a bit of dynamic range, and I did make a video about the dynamic range on this camera, Link down below. <laughs> a lot of tests I've already done on this camera if you're curious about more details about the, uh, the R7. So recording modes and codecs. Now, this camera doesn't shoot in all eye or in raw. You know, the C70 can shoot in long gop, which is an IPB compression, which is what I'm shooting in right now. It's what I most commonly use. It also shoots in all eye and it also shoots in raw. So you gotta keep that in mind, but the bit rates are pretty similar between the IPB on the R7, which is 170 megabits per second, and the long op, which is 160 megabits per second on the C70. So you can definitely get codecs that match pretty well. In terms of DCI and UHD, you know, the C70 can shoot in DCI as well as UHD, the R7 cannot. So if you're trying to shoot something in DCI, which is that 17 by nine aspect ratio, you can't do that on this camera. So you probably gonna have to punch it a little bit, but you have to keep that in mind when you're framing up your shot. You lose a little bit of detail, but because this camera is oversampled, it you probably get away with it. And on, on top of that, I also want to point out that because this camera is oversampled in the 4K fine mode, so it's downsampling a 7K image to 4K, it tends to just look a little bit different than the C70. But again, and you saw those examples, you can get them to look pretty close. Now let's talk about some of the other use cases here for a B camera and how this plays into it. Because as I said earlier, one example is that two camera interview setup, but another example could be where you have your A cam all rigged up and mounted somewhere and then you need your B camera for something different. So maybe you need to get a couple of handheld B roll shots. Maybe you're putting it on a gimbal. This is a great option for that. It has IBIS in it. It's small, it's lightweight, it has great autofocus. So it's great for all those things. But in terms of slow motion, I think this is where the camera is a little bit lacking compared to the C70. Now in 4K60, you can do a line skip 4K60 or you can do a crop mode 4K60. And I made a video detailing all the video modes in this camera too, link down below, a lot of videos down there. And this camera also does not have 4K 120. So if you want 120, you gotta shoot in 1080p. So keep that in mind if you're trying to get the cameras to match and you wanna just pull this camera out to do some slow motion, there are some limitations there. It's also really nice when you're out on, you know, a, a client w job or, you know, anywhere to have a photography camera. Now, the C70 doesn't take photos, so having a hybrid camera is great because you can just pull it out, take a quick couple quick photos. This takes unbelievable photos and you can use great lenses on it. So it's a great option as a hybrid camera to have in your bag for taking photos. Now, as much as I love the R7 and think it is an unbelievable video camera and a great value, I don't think it's fair to think of the R7 as a replacement for the C70. There's a lot of differences, and one of the biggest ones is dynamic range and just the overall image of the C70, which is not something I really need to get into here. But in terms of features, remember the C70 has built-in ND filters, XLR inputs, those high frame rates for 4K recording, like 4K 60 and 120. The codecs are a lot more flexible. You not only have the IPB or the long op, you have the all eye and you have raw recording. There's also a fan in the camera and has, and you can run the camera for a really long time. It really is a professional video camera and will match really well with much larger cameras like C300s and C500s if you're working in that environment. But if you are looking to grab a camera that you can fill in as a B cam and use for a variety of situations, like I said, gimbal, handheld, photography, the R7 is a great option. Or if you're looking to just get into videography and you can't afford a C70, this is a fantastic video camera. And I've made a whole bunch of videos about it and I do highly recommend the, uh, the R7. Hope you found this video helpful. And if you did, please consider hitting subscribe down below. Thank you so much for watching and we'll see you in the next one.